Welcome to Creating Connections Podcast, episode 134. I'm Vicki Musney. And I'm Mitch Taylor. See what we did there? We switched it up. I like that. <laughs> That's because we have a really special guest joining us today. Yes. And Mitch is going to tell you about her. Jody Orgill Brown grew up in the woods in Northern Virginia, just outside of her favorite city of Washington, D.C. And she earned her master's degree of organizational communication from the University of Utah and a bachelor's degree from BYU in public relations. And she also has spent time abroad uh, at the Jerusalem Center for Near Eastern Studies. Now, we tell you this because Jody is someone who is transformational. After an 18 month stint in the high tech world, she had one of those moments, and I'm sure you may have had this moment, of this is not what I want to do with my life. And since then, she's dedicated more than 18 years of her career to helping others through nonprofit consultant speaking and writing. Her memoir, The Sun Still Shines, won multiple awards and is an Amazon bestseller. Jody claims the two most educational experiences of her life were number one, battling a brain tumor which left her with facial paralysis and also threatened her life and tested her family, but increased her grit. And number two, much more heartwarming, being a mom to four wonderful children, ages 18 through 10. They've taught her the most important lessons in life from patience to love, to living in the moment. We are honored to have on our podcast, our good friend and great author, Jody Orgill Brown. Stick around, you don't want to miss this. That was nice and easy. What are you talking about? This also <laughs> speaks to a much bigger issue. Providing personal solutions through understanding people. This is the Creating Connections Podcast with Gittimer Certified Advisor Mitch Taylor and Certified Personality Trainer Vicki Musni. Welcome back to Creating Connections Podcast, Episode 134. I am Mitch Taylor. I'm Vicki Musni, and this is our friend Jody. Hey, Jody. Hello. Good Thank to see you, for you again. Joining us. Thank you for allowing me to be here. Oh, this is so great. So great. Uh, Jody, uh, we first met you at a speaking conference, a speaking event, and I, I, it was so, getting to know you that day, I wasn't prepared for finding your true story, if that makes no, sense. And and I love the way we met. And I'm curious, Jody, to hear if you tell the story of how we met the same as the way Mitch and I tell it. Because to me, how we connected is such a perfect example of the kinds of things that Mitch and I love to talk about on the show and the things we wrote about in our book. Because um, it wasn't necessary. It could seem random, but it was actually very much an intentional choice yes. that you made. So do you want to tell everybody how we first connected? Sure. First of all, I guess the thing that I consider to be one of the foundational principles for who I am and how I uh, choose to live my life as well as run my business and everything else is that I think it only takes a small similarity to make a deep connection with someone. And we had been at the speaking conference. I had noticed you early in the day and we broke for lunch and we ended up at the same restaurant. I saw you and recognized you as having been at the conference and I thought I could either ignore them now and then ignore them again when I go back <laughs> to the event, pretend like we see each other, or I can choose to uh, reach out and say hello and then actually make you know what can be a connection. And so I think all I did was go up and say hello and say that I yeah. recognized you from the event and, and offered my name and asked yours and that started yeah. a conversation which then started a connection which then continued into a relationship. Yes. And I love that because as much as Mitch and I network and go to different events and we're always encouraging people to 
you know, look for someone that you don't know. And when I, when I coach local networking, networking professionals, I'm always don't sit with somebody from your own company, go look for somebody mm -hmm. else. So well, we, did, we, did, <laughs> we did the exact opposite though. So Mitch and I met in Salt Lake City. The only person that we knew ahead of time was our friend Rob Perret, who has been yep. a guest on our show as well. A lot of our listeners know Rob. And so of course, when we got there, we looked for Rob. We hadn't seen each other in months and we looked for him and we, you know, we're going to have lunch with him. And I thought later, go, that was really short sighted and kind of silly yeah. to, you know, look for the one person that we already knew and we're spending time with instead of trying to meet other people. And I was why I was so grateful that you came over at lunch mm -hmm. and you had another friend with you. And I think maybe you part of why you recognized us is because we were new. That was our first time attending an event um, with the NSA in Salt Lake City, the Mountain West chapter. So we kind of stood out. We were the new people and uh, didn't know anybody. And so it was just, it meant a lot to me that you would come and just sit with us and, uh, and begin to tell your story. Um, can we move into talking about your story? Because you have an amazing story. Sure, yeah. absolutely. Let's go for it. And I feel like we got the very, very short version and, and Mitch covered a little bit of this in, in the intro. Um, but when I suggested to Jody that we do a book swap and I said, here, how about I give you a copy of my book and you give me a copy of yours? I had no idea what I was getting into. And uh, this is Jody's book, The Sun Still Shines. And just after the first chapter, I was in awe. I was like, oh my goodness, she is such a remarkable storyteller. Mm -hmm. I felt like I had been transformed and I was in this journey with you. Yes. Oh, you're going to make me cry. <laughs> okay, well, you did make me cry. Okay, this is how my, my reading time looks is it's me going to the gym in the morning and sitting down on an exercise bike and pulling out my book. That is my only like uninterrupted time to, to read. And there were times when I'm sitting there at the gym with tears streaming down my face. I'm like, maybe people will think it's sweat because I'm working, you know, I'm, I'm writing really fast or whatever. And I'm like trying not to just break down. But there were times where I had to remind myself, this story has a happy ending. I've met her. <laughs> yes, it, that was the same for me. I, I read your book on a plane, actually a couple flights, two or three flights, frankly. And, and the whole time, the story, I was so engrossed in your story. Yeah. But yet I knew the outcome, <laughs> but your writing style just drew me right in. Like I was right there at your bedside with you the entire time. And you know, I think that's what I needed to do. Uh, I, I tell in the book that my family kept very detailed records and actually kept a blog of the whole time that I was in the hospital. Yeah which, and after the hospital, they, we did a blog for over a year or a couple of years, which had thousands of followers from all over the world, which amazed me in and of itself. But I kept feeling like their version of the story was only half true. Right. Not because it wasn't true from their perspective, but it missed my perspective, which was completely different, mm -hmm. which was not knowing what was going to happen, what the outcome was going to be. Uh, not that they knew that either, but they came at it from you know their perspective. Um, and I only knew what I was living in the moments. And mm -hmm. some of those moments were really hard. And yeah. I realized when I was going through it that no matter how hard those moments were, I still had to make the choice to be present, um, to do what I could to make the best outcome possible that I could contribute to because I realized there aren't, there wasn't a necessary given outcome. There, there, my road could have gone in very divergent paths. And at one time I thought it was going to, and I really didn't think that I would be around to tell my story and to come to grips with that and to, um, get to a point where I wanted to contribute to have the best income as a, or excuse me, the best outcome, as opposed to just letting other people take care of me and make yeah. the assumption that they're going to do the right thing for me and that they're going to make the best decision because of their title or their doctor or their expertise. 
Um, only I knew what was going on inside my body and I had to come to trust that and to act on it and then to speak up for myself uh, so that I could contribute and be part of my healing. Hmm. Yeah, I just, um, for so many reasons that you that are watching or listening, I just really encourage you to pick up Jody's book. She's yes. a remarkable human being with an incredible story. Um, even if it's not a story that you can relate to personally from personal experience or someone in your family, the, the message of, like you were saying, of being in tune with what's going on and choosing your attitude and your outcome and how you're going to face something. Those are lessons that we all need in life and, and in business. Um, but also, you know, Mitch and I talk a lot about uh, telling your story in, uh, in, in usually when he and I are doing it, it's in a sales situation. And we talk about telling a, a compelling, well thought out, condensed, you know, really short story to help connect um, but if you have a remarkable story like Jody's, there is something really valuable, I think, to putting it in a longer format that you can share with people. Um, it will help you connect at a deeper level. So whether that looks like a book or, or a blog or just being able to tell it um, in an encouraging, inspiring way, I encourage you to think about that as you read Jody's story. Mm -hmm. um, what can you learn? You know, are there lessons that you've experienced in your own life and maybe you can learn from her a way to share them more effectively. And I look at telling stories as the why. It's, it's the motivation behind what you're doing now. Telling your story helps people understand how you came to the point where you are now, whether that's why you decided to start a business, whether that's um, you know, why you're doing anything in your life. It's the why behind the motivation to it. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. if it's in a business setting, you know, what was it that gave you the passion or the idea or the drive to do this? Why do you love it? Yeah. There's the saying, Oh, there's a story behind that. Well, there's yeah. a reason there's a story behind that. That's wow. absolutely part of our, our training and our, our, uh, our workshop and, and everything. Mm -hmm. That por portion of it too, Jody. and your, your why mm -hmm. is so strong. That's what I love about you. Your passion and and your story is just so compelling. Uh, I don't want to spoil anything. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> with the book. But okay. Well, I don't want to make light of it. Book. I'm telling I don't want to make light of it either. But it kind of um, reminds me, like my kids are super into the TV show Flash, and there's times when there's these really intense episodes and you think that, you know, Flash is being attacked by the bad guy and he might die and you get really nervous. And then some, one of the kids will be like, yeah, but we're only in season two and we know it goes up through season five. So he's not really going to die. And there's times when I was sitting here going, okay, I'm trying not to be afraid in this moment that something really bad is going to happen to Jody because I, I, I do know that, that we're friends in real life and I know that she's made it through these hurdles, but you can't help but get lost, you know, in, uh, in the story. And I think those are the, that's one of the things, that's one of the reasons I felt compelled to tell my side of the story. Um, and at first I didn't want to go into some of those deep feelings and those very intimate moments. Um, and then I had people give me feedback and say, no, you, you can't tell part of the story. If you're going <laughs> right. to go in, you got to dive in, you got to go all in. And that put me in a place of vulnerability. And I thought, no way. I'm not telling you what it's like to get a shower in the hospital. I, I'm sorry. I'm just not going there. Um, and then because you had to relive all those moments again, every time you wrote and every version that you edited. And yet in those moments where you go there and you show someone that you really are just a person, there is a connection right. there. Absolutely. Society today, there's this really unrealistic expectation that we're all striving for perfection. And we show only the side of ourselves that, you know, we have on fake nails and fake eyelashes and fake hair color and fake this and fake that. And, and fake book. Oh. <laughs> exactly. And fake book. <laughs> you know, you only show the pictures that you want to show. No. You don't tell everyone that they've been edited and you took a hundred versions in order to get that version that, that's shown publicly. And so there is something about being vulnerable and letting people know that you're real and that you're raw 
um, and your emotions are raw and just authentic. When you're authentic, people connect with you and they relate to you because they know they can trust you. There's a huge trust factor that comes with authenticity. And I wanted people to know I'm no different than anyone else is. And so if you're wondering what it was like, oh my gosh, what must have happened? If you're in the hospital for a month, that means, yes, you went to the bathroom multiple times. You had to be showered or changed. And if I don't tell you, then you're going to be wondering. Um, right. And I would rather tell you and show you what it was like from my perspective mm -hmm. and help you know that you can trust me and relate to me and that there is no expectation of perfection um, because it's when we're real that we can make, create connections that last. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Breaking down those walls is sometimes so hard uh, for us as individuals because we want to put them up. We don't want to always let people into what's going Not on. Not that much world. detail. Mitch, yeah. you nailed it. We want to put those up. In fact, that's been one of the hardest things personally is my husband would prefer not to have a minutia of our private life shared with anyone. And yet I've got my whole life and all of my innermost feelings uh, written on pages in the book. Hmm. And that's a hard place to come to. And it was actually difficult, first of all, for him to read the book and then for him to except that we were going to release all of this very private information to the world. Mm -hmm. And I didn't do it and we didn't do it lightly. Oh, I'm there sure. was really a compelling factor that there was something more to be gained by this. This experience wasn't my experience or our experience. There is some aspect that this is a shared experience that even though other people might have different and unique circumstances, there are certain feelings, there are certain fears that we all feel. And that is at the heart of who we are as human beings. Hmm. There's, there's something to be said about legacy, in my opinion. Mm -hmm. And having not only your family legacy, but others learn from your challenge, your unique situation that you found yourself in, and to be able to give that to the public is a huge gift so well and not that you would have ever a gift not that you would have ever chosen to go through everything that you went through right but to be able to come out stronger on the other side and and share that message of hope um and everything that you have overcome that is, that's a blessing to all of us that have yeah. an opportunity to, to hear your story. And, and frankly, it has helped make you the Jody that we met. You know, mm -hmm. you, if you had you not gone through that, I'm sure you still would have been a great person, but you would be a different person. I mean, part of your story of how you got to be the you that I know is because you went through all of this. And, you know, we all come at, to points in our lives where we face some of those decisions uh, as to whether or not to share some of those experiences, to share those vulnerabilities, to learn from it or to become bitter from it. Hmm. Nearly any struggle, trial, whatever you want to name it, you can choose to become bitter or you can choose to become better. Uh, and I really felt like this experience was bigger than me. No, I didn't choose it. Um, but you probably wouldn't choose some of your greatest challenges either. And yet those are also our greatest opportunities mm -hmm. for growth. And one of the things I learned very quickly uh, was the importance of relationships. It doesn't matter what stuff I have in my home. What matters are the connections I had with people. And yeah. in moments for that sure. were honest, those were the most powerful mm -hmm. things. It was the moments when people reached out to me when they came to visit, when they made phone calls, when they posted notes on a blog when I was unconscious, but knew that they wanted to leave something positive for me so that when I woke up, I had reason to hold on. Yeah. And that hope and those connections and those relationships are powerful. Mm -hmm. And that was part of what compelled me is to thank other people for the connections that we have and for them reaching out to me and then also helping people to understand that that small 
effort to reach out really can change a life, change a business, change mm -hmm. a situation. It can save someone. Mm -hmm. And I don't say that lightly. I mean, it can save someone mm -hmm. when they are having a hard time. Uh, we don't know. We only know what we put on Facebook. <laughs> we only know what people are going through according to the walls that they let us see through and the windows mm -hmm. that they mm -hmm. let us look through. And so putting out the positive things and the lessons that can be learned and reaching out and trying to make a difference, even in the smallest way, um, really says a lot about who we are and what we value, which I hope is people and relationships and connections. Yeah, I love that. And then Jody, you do that through speaking and obviously writing about your story, but you also have another business side too. Can do we have time, Mitch, for her to share a little bit about that with yep. us? Co couple okay. minutes. All right. So what's the, the short version of the other half of what you do? The short version is a couple of years, not even a couple of years, 18 months into my career after college, I was working for a high tech company thought that I was in this fantastic job, and yet I had a very strong uh, epiphany moment. A, this is not what I want to do with my life <laughs> moment, where I realized if I was going to be putting forth so much effort, um, I, wanted it, I wanted to feel like it made a difference of some kind. And so I left the for-profit world and went into the nonprofit world and have since spent 18 years um, in philanthropy, nonprofit management, nonprofit consulting, trying to help others do what they want to do by making a difference in the world, um, both through nonprofit management as well as helping set up uh, fundraising campaigns and development strategies. Um, and that's something that I've been passionate about and I was passionate about before. Now I think I'm maybe more passionate. <laughs> um, <laughs> But I'm probably also a little bit more selective because I, I also realize I need to extend my energy. Absolutely. And I'm in areas that I feel like will make the biggest difference because I have to be very careful about that. Yeah, that's well, something I think we can all relate to. Mm -hmm. You have definitely made a difference in our lives. Yeah. So thank you, Jody. Thank you. Yes, thank you. Thanks for sharing your story. Um, with us again and um and with our listeners and thank yeah. you for the invitation because yep. as much as i would want to connect it takes the invitation to connect in order to make it happen absolutely yeah. where can people pick up your book jody uh the easiest way is on any online book retailer whether that be amazon or barnes and noble anywhere online <laughs> i'll hold it up again the sun still shines or you can then, read more about it and about me at the sun still shines.com beautiful perfect thanks so much for joining us today jody thank you thank you what an amazing interview with jody oh my gosh i, I love her you know a couple things that i think we all hit on there uh fake book <laughs> <laughs> Did I just quote that, I think, for the first time ever, maybe? I don't know. No. Um, but I love what Jody said. You're either going to get bitter or you're going to get better. Mm -hmm. And she lives that. I mean, that's just who she is, you know? Um, yeah. She, she lives the experience that she had and the transformation that she had. And like you said in the, in the interview, Vicki, you know, she would have been a different person, still a great person, mm -hmm. but a different person. Yeah. And I'm very thankful to have met Jody, this person that's gone through that experience and shared that her legacy with the world. Um, opening up. Mm -hmm. And the story of her husband and not wanting to share and, you know. No, I get the feeling he's quite the blue. And um, yeah, yeah, just even from, from what I read and, you know, in her, in her book. Absolutely. Yeah, I got that too. I'm, I'm labeling everybody by colors. You know, you know how I do. I That's don't have to read them do. in person. I can read them about them in a memoir and still, <laughs> still label them. But yeah, it's a, it's a. It's a bigger stretch, I think, for those it people is. who naturally want to stay private yeah. to share something of that magnitude. But I'm just so grateful 
that uh, they came to the decision to go ahead and share that information. Um, well, because look I, at all of the connections that have come out of um, about as a result and just the inspiration that she is and has become to so many people. Yeah, it speaks to who they are as people. Mm -hmm. The selflessness to to let that spouse give that to the world. Yeah. Um, so very cool. Mm -hmm. Thanks so much for watching uh, Creating Connections podcast episode 134. I'm Mitch Taylor. And I'm Vicki Musney. We hope that this episode and every episode helps you provide personal solutions through understanding people better. We'll see you next time. Thanks for watching. Have a great week. Thank you for listening to the Creating Connections podcast with Gittimer Certified Advisor Mitch Taylor and Certified Personality Trainer Vicki Musney. For more information on providing personal solutions through understanding people better, visit creatingconnections.biz.